Thank you guys so much again for coming back for another entry. This time, I'm going to talk about a film that uh, a couple entries ago, I spoke about the trailer, and the film finally debuted. It's been out for about a week or so now. Uh, I saw it, it's opening weekend, so I want to want to kind of give it some time to sit out there before I gave it an official entry and actually spoke about it because I was very excited about it. The film trailer was released back in December and the original release date was supposed to be in February, but it got pushed. And finally, close to the end of March into April, it's been released. The film we're going to talk about is Nobody and... All I really have to say is it's spectacular. It, like in all in all attributes of that word, it is such an awesome film, not just action-wise, but also storytelling. Like for a film that's just under a little two two hours about, a little less, maybe like an hour and 40 or something like that, it is very much worth sitting through and it's not a disappointment whatsoever. I don't know much about Bob Odenkirk except for his roles in, say, Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul, which is what a lot of people know him from. But this is like, I can't even picture anybody else playing this role. The film is basically, even the trailer kind of misinterpreted, not even misinterpreted, kind of led you to believe the film was going in a different different direction than what it actually went into. The trailer depicted certain aspects of the story, but I'm guessing that was kind of misleading. One of the things in the trailer they spoke about was like, oh, this is, um, he, I was a creditor, and then the guy's like, oh, your auditor knows of your resurgence or whatever. I don't re- recall seeing any of that in the film. Again, it's been a week, but I do remember the film very well, and that was not spoken about whatsoever. What it really is, it's a film about a guy who was basically kind of a government secret agent who wanted to retire, and they basically let him. So he started a family, had two kids, but he's at that point in his life where, like, his marriage is kind of on shaky ground, he's kind of living that very suburban life, and then... Like in the trailers, they show that the the house gets broken into by some burglars. So when they break in, what this essentially sets up is that he tries, or at least it portrays that he tries to like stop them, but he feels like he can't because he knows he could probably like murder them because of how much he's trained. So he kind of controls himself, and that causes his... Uh, son to kind of look at him weirdly like why didn't you stop them causes his neighbors to talk down to him Uh, he works at a job with his brother-in-law his brother-in-law treats him like shit and so then this kind of rage starts building up in him and it's kind of like he has this almost pent up anger or this uh this this pent up part of him that wants violence and so then he wants to find the people So he remembers, like, seeing a tattoo, Uh, then he goes out and he tries to find them, and he eventually does, but then he sees that, like, it's a little bit of a different situation for them, so he feels like he can't take it out on them, and then he gets on a bus, and these hooligans get on a bus, and they start fucking with this young girl, and it's late at night, and he basically just like, okay, these other people robbed me, but they weren't bad, but these dudes on the bus... Yeah, they're bad guys. I need to punch something, so I'm going to punch these dudes. What he doesn't know is when he beats them up and puts them in the hospital, one of the dudes just so happens to be the brother of somebody who's part of a big Russian mob syndicate in the city he lives in. And of course, that opens up this door where they go after him. They don't know who he is. They try to find him. His all, his entire profile is buried because the government buried it because he used to be like this major hitman that the government doesn't want to know about. And they find the documents and even the documents, like the the main f- focus of like the trailers at the very end where he's sitting in an interrogation room and they're like, like, who the fuck are you? And he's like, me? I'm nobody. When they find documents, the documents, everything's blacked out except for the word nobody. And whenever people are talking to him that he doesn't want, like, he doesn't want to talk about himself, he says, I'm just a nobody. So nobody play like, the word nobody plays a big role. That's probably why the name fits it so well. 
And the more people start to find out about him, the more they're like, I, I-, I don't want to fuck with this guy. And it's this portrayal of, like, almost how... I like to relate it to the um, the Batman Dark Knight Returns storyline, where it portrays Batman in a way where he's already, like, retired, he stops being Batman, but then he has this built-up vengeance he still wants to get out, so he goes back to being Batman. That's kind of what this story is. He has this pent-up rage from from the life he used to live, and... At this point in his, at this time in his life, it's just so mediocre for him. Every day is the same thing over and over again. And then he goes out and he wants to release this rage, and it just goes on to be like a week straight of him dealing with beating the crap out of people, shooting up the Russian mob, blowing shit up, burning shit down. It's just so much fun. It's such a fun movie from beginning to ending. And I really don't, I really can't imagine anybody but Bob Odenkirk in this role now again i don't know him for much besides the two shows i mentioned breaking bad and better call saul now i'm gonna be honest i never even watched those i was never a big person to get on the train the bandwagon of you know people who constantly spoke highly of you know these highly reviewed and highly um what's the word i'm trying to find critically acclaimed shows per se like i've never seen sons of anarchy i've never seen breaking bad i've never seen dexter i just i i don't usually flow with it when people are really talking highly about it i don't know why i just feel like you know their shows if i get to them i'll get to them i've never gotten to breaking bad and i've never known this actor in anything but those and being that this is the first major role i've seen him and it's completely out of what i know of his character in those shows because if i'm not mistaken he just plays a lawyer in those shows So there's probably not too much action like what you see in this film. And I think he's going down the same path of like guys like Liam Neeson, who came out of nowhere and in his 50s just became this huge action star. I feel like this is the beginning of Bob Odenkirk's trip down that same road. I feel like if we're not going to get another Nobody, which we 100% should, if we don't get a sequel for this, we're probably going to see a lot of other roles that that he takes that portrays this same action. And... My hope is that it doesn't turn out to be that Liam Neeson thing where he just kind of just gets roles in movies that just don't make any sense, like Unknown or Commuter. Like, Liam Neeson in the Taken series, perfect. Build up on the Taken series. Same thing with this. Build up on the Nobody series. If you make a Nobody 2 or whatever you want to call it, I'm fully down for that. If you want to try him out in a different role that's still action at least make it make sense because I feel like after a while it's just like they hire they would get Liam Neeson for these roles and it didn't make any sense I mean that might just be me I'm not gonna lie I did watch a lot of them because I'm I'm a big you know Liam Neeson fan and I've been following Liam Neeson for years before he became a big action star you know back when he was um in I can go as far back as uh Krull from like the 1980s and I doubt anybody who's listening to this might even know of Krull and if you do you know what I'm talking about and you probably didn't even realize that Liam Neeson was in that because he just plays a side character but that's how far back my appreciation for an actor like Liam Neeson goes so I do feel like I'm kind of going to get there with Bob Odenkirk and this is definitely a start from what I see for that it's very critically reviewed in such a good way he's got like a 7 Point eight on IMDb. He's got an 81 on Rotten Tomatoes. The audience rates it at a 95. Metacritic has it in the 60. Google users have it in the 90s. It's very much appreciated across the board, and very few things that I've read speak negatively about it. And if you're looking for an endorsement for it, it's got my endorsement. If you want to go on to see what other reviewers have that you might not want to be listening to me, you can check out any of them from either things like uh, uh, Rotten Tomatoes, uh, Cinema Blend, even Roger Ebert. He praised the film, and he doesn't praise much. You know what I'm saying? New York Times called it a, um, a great film. The Vulture called it a great film. Wall Street Journal called it a great film. It's just, it, it's got a lot of potential, and it's, it's, done, it's done so well, and it's very different from what we're used to in action films. You know, it has its action movie tropes, but it's not done to the 
point where it's cliche or it just gets annoying. It's done very well, and I appreciate the film, and I really enjoyed it, especially for being the first film I got to see in theaters in the last six months. You know, with everything going on, it's hard to get to the theaters, and it has to be worth it almost. And to me, this film was worth it, and I wouldn't mind going to see it again, but, you know, with everything going on, you gotta, you know, take your chances where you find them, you know, whatever you feel like risking, whatever you're comfortable with. I would suggest if you do want to see it in theaters, go watch it. It's very much an action film that's worth seeing in theaters. Uh, but yeah, if you want to wait till it comes out on streaming, definitely find it at some point and watch it. It's totally worth it. If you're a Bob Odenkirk fan, if you're a Breaking Bad fan, even if you're a fan of just really good action films, watch this movie. I'm telling you, it, you will not be disappointed. And that's my endorsement for this film, and I do hope they make more, or at least Bob Odenkirk blows up from this in a better way than he did with Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul. But yeah, this gets my endorsement completely.